Many of us know that in the 1960s and 70s, Lake Erie had the moniker of being a dead lake. Most of the problems in the lake, it turns out, were associated with way too much phosphorus going into the lake, and the phosphorus stimulated excessive growths of algae. We had attached algae, we had floating mats of blue-green algae. You dip a glass of water out of the lake and it would look like pea soup. Most of the phosphorus was coming from municipal sewage treatment plants, but also that agriculture was a significant source of phosphorus too. Programs were implemented to uh, reduce phosphorus at sewage treatment plants. That target load was 11,000 metric tons, and in 1981, that target load was met for the first time. And in reality, on average, we've met that load ever since that time. So it has come as somewhat a shock to discover that as we look at the lake in the most recent decade, it's taking on many of the characteristics of the lake of the 1960s and 70s. So the nature of phosphorus runoff has changed from mostly particulate attached to sediment now to a large, much larger fraction being dissolved phosphorus. And as far as algae are concerned, dissolved phosphorus is like a power bar, whereas phosphorus that's attached to sediment is like empty calories. It's kind of a yellow-green blanket, and at times it's fairly thick. It's like driving through pea soup, and it's kind of unattractive. I mean, we got a beautiful lake here, and this end of the lake, uh, it's pretty ugly looking. I mean, I wouldn't want to swim in it. I wouldn't want to go into it. Uh, fishing in the stuff is not that great either. I take a lot of people out. They want to go on a nice, beautiful lake. So what I've been forced to do now is physically drive past that to get to cleaner looking water where we can go fishing. 2003 was the largest bloom up until that time, but 2008 was even bigger. And this year, we don't have all the data in, but this year might be even the biggest bloom of all. Every year, the bloom seems to radiate outward. So by now, you know, it may start there in, in August or July, but by September, by now, the bloom has covered most of the western basin of Lake Erie, and now it's even extending out into the central basin. So it's a huge bloom, thousands of square kilometers.